So today is bike maintenance day, as you can see by the bike behind me. Today I'm gonna give it a service. I've already given it a bit of a spring clean, sort of. I've already drained the oil. It's gonna get new coolant, that's already drained. And because I've never checked it out, I'm actually gonna replace the clutch. I'm gonna upgrade the clutch because my bike has still got the judder springs, which I can't stand. So I'm going to fit new clutch discs from a CBR 250, 300, whatever you might call it. Um, I'll put all the details of all of this in the description below. But I'm gonna put heavy duty springs in as well. I'm obviously gonna replace the oil filter and uh, air filter. I've got a new gasket to the air filter and uh, other filters and all the rest of it. So I'll take you through all of that. So I've spared you taking the fairings off. It's pretty basic to be honest. Um, just don't do anything that holds them on. Don't rip away at anything, just pry it all away gently and you won't go far wrong. And I've also not taken you through draining the oil or the coolant. Um, we're gonna replace both of them clearly, uh, but it's pretty basic stuff. Undo this for the oil um, and then the sump plug underneath and it'll all drain out. Uh, and likewise the coolant, the radiator cap on the other side and then this six mil bolt here. Just undo that and the coolant will drain. So we're gonna replace those as a matter of course. And we'll also do the air filter at the end of it. But predominantly, I'm gonna take you through the clutch upgrade because the clutch upgrade is probably the biggest piece of maintenance um, that I'm gonna to do today. So I'll take you through the clutch. Should be pretty simple. I'm going to fit friction discs from a uh, CBR 250, 300, whatever you might call it. Um, by all counts, they go straight on and uh, are a massive upgrade, get rid of that judder spring that everybody talks about. Obviously, before I've put it up on the bike stand, I've already replaced the sump plug underneath. I'll put a bit of uh, footage in there so you can see what that's all about. But uh, yeah, let's jump straight in and see what's what. Now, before we jump into this, I think it's worth explaining that I don't think you need to be a trained mechanic to tackle this. It's at home. I've got a basic toolkit um, in front of me. It's got everything I need, a set of, set of sockets, um, a full set of spanners, maybe a few pliers, etc., a few screwdrivers, nothing out there. Um, and it's something that you can obviously tackle in your garage. Clearly I'm going to do that. So what we need to do is just strip anything that basically gets in our way of taking this engine cover off. This engine cover covers the clutch basket, which sits right here. And I'll explain what that's all about when we get to it. But to get to the engine casing, what we need to be able to do is strip all these coolant hoses, the brake mechanism, this brake control, and a few other little bits. So the first thing that we're gonna cover off is all of this here. This is the um, brake assembly, obviously. So we're gonna to have to remove this cover, uh, ultimately just to disconnect a couple of springs here, the uh, brake mechanism here, and we're just gonna to have to take this pedal out because we're gonna to need to be getting in and around all of this area here. So let's jump straight into that. So cover off, and then the first bits that we need to do is just start to disconnect a couple of these little springs around here. There's the first little spring, it just sits on the back of the pedal, right down there. You just use a set of pliers and pull that away. And then, here we go. And then I think for ease, uh, I'm just going to remove these two Allen bolts. Um, and then on the back here, there is a spring which you need to pull out towards the rear of the bike. And ultimately, that is just going to free up the brake pedal. That'll be out of our way. There we go. What we call a nappy pin. For any fathers out there. One final spring down here, the return spring. There we go. Wash this off the back. And out she pops. Now, if you wanted to do it a different way, we could have removed this little split pin here, cut a pin, call it what you will. Um, but I don't have a replacement, to be honest, uh, and I don't want to bend that one and get that one a bit knackered. So uh, that's just a little bit of a, a fix. You can get around it doing that way. Um, come off of me, Angov. Uh, we'll just hook that back on there, just for safekeeping. Okay, so now we're going to connect the clutch cable here. You can see that's just the same style as on your brakes on your mountain bike of old. So we'll just push that in a fraction and slip the clutch cable out. Okay, so disconnected, brakes disconnected. Let's remove this coolant pipe. Now, 
we shouldn't get any other coolant out of this, but I guess be prepared just in case. So that looks like it is a six millimeter. So pretty much all there is to do now is start working around the engine case, removing all the bolts. Um, they're all eight millimeters, so get your finest eight mil socket out. A bit of an extension bar, I'd suggest. And uh, yeah, go for it. I'll, um, I'll speed this bit up for you. There we go guys, all of the bolts removed. I think it's worth bearing in mind just exactly how I've organised these here. I've just taken them out, starting from this one, and then just gone around so I know exactly which one's which. And therefore I know that the slightly shorter one goes in this one here, and the slightly longer one goes in around here. So it is well worth keeping uh, a check on your bolts. Next stage is to remove the engine case. What I'm going to do here is just pry this away real gently with a screwdriver. What you'll notice is there's a couple of little bits here where you can just gently pry it with a screwdriver. So real easy, no heroics here. You don't want to be damaging this and it should come away relatively simple anyway. And there we go. You don't have to spill oil and coolant on your toolbox like I did, but you do get extra professional points if you do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean up here, but it's worth noting, there's my clutch, and uh, we're looking good. This stuff, incidentally, is an absolute lifesaver when you're doing a job like this. I think it's worth noting that if you had the bike on the side stand at this point, you probably wouldn't have to deal with all this bit of excess oil obviously it'll just drain into this up here or go the other way but uh yeah since i've got it upright obviously i'm gonna have to deal with all the tiny bits of oil so there we have it there's the engine without the case on it and you just need to be real careful when you're doing this because there's a couple of little o-rings around here um, that have just started to come away so i've just had to put those back in and i'll obviously clean those when i come to refit it but right here this is our clutch basket okay so enough looking at it Let's get in amongst it and I'll explain exactly how the clutch works. So I think it's worth noting, the bolts around the outside were eight millimeters. These ones are 10. Now, like I previously mentioned, I'm actually going to replace these springs in any case. I don't know if they're the originals. I don't even know if the clutch is the original. I'm guessing it is. Um, we'll soon find out when we get in amongst it. One times clutch cover, pressure plate, call it what you will. And here we go. Here's the arrangement of the clutch. Now, actually, this looks in pretty good shape but uh, I'm gonna replace it out anyway. You can see oil dripping from this, it's perfectly normal. Bikes operate a wet clutch system, it means you can slip it all the while, whereas your car is typically a dry clutch. Um, okay, so let's remove this and we'll see the condition of it. Okay, so I'm going to guess this actually was the original, simply because we've still got these. Now these are called the Judder Springs, and what they do is they sit right at the back 
of the clutch pack here and they just keep that first disc just off the pressure plate. And I don't really know why it does it to be fair, but I guess because it works against this, the thinner of the friction plates. Notice how, if I just get a standard one out, notice the difference in those. Judder springs sit against that. And I guess it just gives it a bit more ability to slip, gives uh, the novice uh, an opportunity to slip the clutch a little bit easier. I don't really know, to be honest, but I've noticed it out on the trails. I wouldn't say it's really bothered me, but uh, I know it's there and I don't need it. So they're a goner. Likewise, I won't be putting a thin friction disc pack. So here's our clutch pack. Here's our friction plates. They're the ones with a little bit of friction material on them, obviously. And here's our stator plates or our steel plates, call them what you will. Now, obviously I've got multiple of these in the clutch pack, but ultimately with these springs, these pair come together when I want to drive the bike. And the friction plates here on the friction discs grip the steel plates and ultimately transfers the energy from the engine to the gearbox. And when I pull my clutch in, they come apart. Now the problem with the judder springs is this one being so much thinner than this one tends to get warmer quicker, tends to burn out quicker, therefore wear quicker. And if any one of these plates start to wear down in your clutch pack, typically you'll start to get clutch slip, which happened on Jamie's bike as a 2020 model. So it's worth getting rid of it guys. If you're in there changing your clutch, typically uh, I haven't had any issues with it, but hey, make your own mind up. What I'm gonna replace them with are these. Now, I'll put all the links in the description below, but ultimately, this is an EBC friction disc set. Um, it's the uh, 18, 18 or 1313, um, which has got five full-size discs just like this. Like I said earlier, come out of the CBR 250, 300, whatever it is. Um, yeah, and it's got exactly the right height of it without those judder springs. So what we're going to do is we are going to clean all of this up and uh, we'll start assembling. When you assemble them, people say it's worthwhile just wiping these down with oil. Um, some people soak them forever. I'm just going to wipe mine down with a smear of oil. You can tell obviously they're all oiled up now. Uh, but I'm also going to take my time just to inspect these because these are going back in. What is worth noting is you've just got a bit of discoloration on a couple of these. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe you can, maybe you can't make out that discoloration. That's where the uh, steel disc has got hot. So I know I've got hot spots in my clutch, as you can appreciate. Um, to get these back to a standard color, I'm gonna rub these on a concrete floor. Uh, I saw it on the internet and the internet is fact. We all know that, so uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Ultimately, as long as they're not bent, uh, they can be scratched up as much as you want because that's kind of the deal with them. They need to grip things. So let me get on with that. I think it must have one of the smoothest garage floors ever because I think it's just gently polishing it rather than uh, roughing it up. But hmm. Okay, so that's discs cleaned up. But I just want to take you through uh, how the clutch works here, because that might just help you understand exactly why you're doing this job. Now, as we saw, the clutch lives in here, and this is called the clutch basket. Now, ultimately, we've got one part of the clutch basket which free spins, and the other which is rigid. And that's because the rigid one is attached by this mechanism here to this chain, which is driven by the engine. So that's really good news. When the engine spins, this one is gonna spin. But of course, when we're in neutral, or if we've got a clutch in, we don't want the bike to be going forward. So we want this one to be able to spin. And that's where these come in. And if you notice, because the steel ones sit on the free spinning one, but the friction discs sit on the driven one. So now when they come together, the friction ones will drive these steel plates. Now, when you're slipping the clutch, what you're doing is you're just bringing these away from each other ever so slightly. 
And of course, if you've ever run your hand along a surface and built up friction, you'll know it gets hot and it's heat that ultimately burns a clutch out. So that's why you're doing it, guys. Um, we slip our clutches quite a lot when we're off-road. Um, they're designed to be slipped. Uh, you know, that's why it's got oil going around it and it's cooling, um, etc. But, you know, they will burn out eventually if you're not careful. So that's why we're changing it out. And you can see our new friction discs next to the old ones. Look how nice they're gonna go in. And of course, we've got all five full-size friction discs to go in. And this is the order they're gonna go in. Friction disc, then steel disc, friction steel, friction steel, friction steel, and so on until they're all in. Okay, time to reassemble our clutch. Now, remember, you can soak these in oil. Some people will recommend that. Uh, I'm just gonna give them a smear of clean engine oil. It's a bit of a messy job, so. Um... Nice one. So, that is the clutch built up. So now it's just a matter of putting it all back together and it starts with the clutch cover. I have cleaned this because this is still one of your uh, surfaces and the bolt just simply goes through the middle. Like that. Remember I also said I'm going to fit new springs. These are the heavy duty springs and ultimately what they do is when your clutch is released they keep this further in or a bit more pressure in, sorry, I should say. So I think for eight quid or whatever they were, apparently they're 20% stronger. You might need a bit more of a pull on the lever when it actually comes to releasing your clutch, but. Now it's probably worth noting that you should really torque these up, but uh, I do have a torque wrench, just can't really be bothered with it. Uh, so I'm just going to use a bit of experience and just do them tight and a little bit. Uh, they weren't particularly tight when I took them off and I don't think they need to be particularly tight when I do them up either. So uh, tight and a bit, I think. You should absolutely talk yours up. It's a sensible thing to do. Listen to the manuals. Don't listen to me. I'm going to tighten them in a cross position here. So across from the one that I've tightened. There we have it clutch installed. It's pretty simple really. Okay so all that's left to do is to clean this up, get this ready for the cover going back on, replace the gasket, bolt it all together and uh, Bob's your uncle. It is worth noting that this mating surface should be real nice and clean when you put the other gasket on. So uh, it's worth spending just a few minutes going around it all. So just while that's draining, let's have a look at this. This is our engine case. And this is the gasket that we are going to replace. So just worth noting, there's a couple of dowels here. I've got one right in my hand. There's one in the engine case over by that coolant pipe as well. Uh, and they obviously locate the cover. You might want to relocate them to the actual case if they're in the engine still just to keep your cover in place when you put it back on. But yeah, just need to go around this real careful. This isn't clean, this isn't coming off as cleanly as the engine side and uh, get the old razor blade around it, clean it right up. Okay, so new gasket on the cover, as you can see. There's a couple of things really worth noticing in here. Guys. If you pull up on the clutch uh, release mechanism too much, that spring will come out the hole. It's pretty easy to relocate. Um, just be mindful that you do that. And also whilst the cover's been off, I've, uh, I've released the oil filter cap, uh, cleaned that up and we'll replace the oil filter whilst we're at it. So uh, yeah, let's get this back on the bike. So we'll just tuck this up out of the way. Move this gently and just carefully offer this back to the bike. We'll carefully offer that back up. Little tap. There we go, and we're back on. So you can see where I've released the oil filter here. 
Uh, here's the old one, pretty manky to be honest. Um, and there's the old gasket, always get a new gasket, that one's done. And uh, yeah, all that's left to do is do these back up and we're on. So once that's back on, I'll rejoin you and uh, we'll refit all the brake stuff. Okay, so let's fit the new oil filter. So we'll build up by the cover first. So your filter even has written on it outside this side towards cover. So you really can't go wrong on that bit. But where you could go wrong is there's a little spring that just sits in there. So uh, just be careful when you're building it back up. Your filter will go on first and then your cover your pre-position with the couple of bolts just to hold your gasket together. And then don't forget your little spring. Nice one. Oil filter cover back on with new filter. So now it's just a matter of rebuilding all of this, putting it all back together, topping up the fluids, and we're good to go. So I'll do that and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the other side. There we have it guys, all buttoned up, oil topped off, just right in between the two marks. Bit of coolant, we're all squared. Clean everything down, get it all ready, get the fairings back on, and we're good to go. And there we go, old air filter. I'm just gonna put a standard one back on. I've got no mods made to this or to the air box. Uh, I don't really feel like I need that at the minute, so maybe in time uh, I'll sort that. So I'm just gonna give it a quick clean in here, whack the new air filter in, and we're good to go. Pretty clean in there already, to be fair. So, okay, guys, there we have it new clutch, an upgraded clutch, no less, and a full service, all for around about £135 here in UK. I'll put all the links in the description below of all of the stuff I've used, from oil to the coolants to the springs, to the actual friction discs, all the rest of it. So uh, yeah, feel free to have a click of the links and get all your kit ready to upgrade your clutch if you haven't done so already. I've got a few more mods coming up on this bike. I've got some rentals to go up here and a new Hyper Pro spring in the front, but we'll get to that when we get to it. At the minute, we're just getting ready for adventure. The lockdown's starting to ease, so we're going to start bringing you those videos soon enough. But if you've enjoyed this one, please give it a like, give it a comment, or even subscribe if you haven't done so, so far. Okay, until next time then, take it easy. Bye-bye.